What is the best way to find homes for sale in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul area? Hey, this is Hank with HankSellsHomes.com, Realtor with Remax Elite. And over the years, I've had a number of buyers, way too many, come to me and say, Hank, I found this property online. I think this is the one we want. Let's go take a look at it. And it's like, great, what's the address? And I look it up and it is not for sale and hasn't been for sale for quite some time. Very, very frustrating for everyone involved. So in this video, I'll discuss uh, my experiences with uh, one of these websites. And in the end, I'll give you my recommendation is the best way to, to find homes that are actually for sale here in the Twin Cities. So first of all, um, probably the biggest culprit is uh, Zillow.com. It seems to be the main one that uh, everyone uses. It's a good looking website. Unfortunately, some of the data they provide is, is not the best. Um, but let's backtrack for just a bit. Back when I first got my real estate license, like way back in the early 90s, before the internet or anything like that, us realtors were issued books, kind of like phone books. I wish I would have kept one. Every, every few weeks with the homes for sale in our region. Unfortunately for, for us, they were kind of obsolete by the time they were printed. So you'd call to set up a showing on one of the properties and they'd say, oh, you already accepted an offer. And then a new listing would have to wait until the new book was issued to get much activity at all, unless somebody saw the sign or something or an ad in the paper back in the day. But fast forward till now, uh, to now, we have this internet and all these websites that pop up that go around and, and provide the consumers with uh, information on properties for sale but they don't have access to the MLS like realtors do the multiple listing service. So they, they're kind of grabbing it from all over. And I to give you a couple of uh, situations that I've had uh, over the years. I had a buyer give me a call early one Saturday morning and said pretty much what I was talking about. Hank, we found our dream home. This is it. We want to make an offer on it. When if we take a look at it? And I'm like, great because I knew they were pre-qualified and I knew they, they, they knew what they wanted to buy. And if they found it, they're ready to go. So I got ready and got paperwork ready to make an offer. And I pull up the property and I don't know what they're talking about. It certainly isn't for sale. And I called them up and he said, I, I asked, where did you find this property? And he said those dreaded words, you know, Zillow. Dot com. I was like, oh man, no. So it was a big letdown for, for everyone, especially them. But in that particular property, I mean, it was, it was outrageous. It hadn't been for sale for, if I remember right, like a year and a half. There had been new, uh, new buyers living in it for well over a year. And it, it was still listed as an active listing for sale. So ridiculous. Uh, one thing about Zillow, is, is they get their income, they're there to provide um, realtors, real estate agents, and lenders with leads. That's, how, that's how they, why they exist. They extract the consumers, whatever they can get, email, phone number, address, and turn around and sell that information to real estate agents and lenders. And uh, you can't blame Zoll for doing that, and I certainly can't blame real estate agents and lenders for wanting to pay money to get people to work with. But and so if you ever accidentally find yourself on Zillow.com, up in the right hand corner, right hand side, uh, you'll find some pretty faces and names of people of agents, and maybe below that a lender or two. Those are the ones that are paying Zillow money to get your contact information. So when you enter in your, your email address or phone or whatever, those three, four, five, six agents get your information and will probably be contacting you because they're paying big money to get it. Um, but unfortunately, the other side of that is, as I said before, some of the data that Zillow provides is not the best. And all of us in the industry are kind of have dealt with it, you know, so many times. Um, another story on the other side of someone who was selling their home. So I listed a, a property for sale 
Um, we'll back up. I you know did a, a market analysis to determine what I thought the property should be listed for based on recent sales and other information. And I gave the seller a range, if I remember right, about $10,000 listed for between here and here. And they did, they listed it within that range. And then did a lot of marketing in the first weekend that it was active, I had an open house on it. And a lot of people came through, if I remember right, like 30, 35, maybe 40 people came to the open house and one after another, they kept saying, why is this property listed so much more than the Zestimate? I'm like, the Zestimate's not, you know, don't go by that. And they're like, it's, wh why is that though? And, you know, on and on and on. And so I looked it up and sure enough, it was listed for, I don't remember the number, but it was like a lot, like 35, 40, maybe 45,000 more than what the Zestimate said it was worth. Very, very frustrating. And after that, I did what I could. I went in and back then you couldn't really do a whole lot to tweak the, the, the Zestimate as a realtor, but I did some and it came up a little bit. Nowhere near for what you had it listed. And in the end, that property sold for what we had it listed for. So the Zestimate was, was wrong. And I just want to discourage anyone from really using that, excuse me, as a, uh, a viable number for what the uh, home is worth. Um, another, probably the mother of all stories with Zillow.com is there was a home in Seattle that sold for, where is it here? $1,050,000. Home in Seattle sold for $1,050,000. But unfortunately, the Zestimate, Zestimate on Zillow.com said it was worth $1,608,670. So that's not good, right? It's a difference of $558,670. But here's the kicker. That home was the, Z, that home was the CEO of Zillow.com. The CEO of Zillow.com, his home was off by $558,670. So, I mean, the joke is, what did one's estimate say to the other? You're a little off. So I'll ask to say that these websites are not the best at getting information. I, I can't blame the consumer because they look good and um, it's really all you have access to, most people think. But there, there's a better way to do it. And the, what you wanna do is get access to the real MLS, multiple, multiple listing service that us realtors use updated every 15, 20 minutes. And if there's a property in there for sale, it's actually for sale. And the way to do that is to use an app. Um, I just switched ones that I recommended. I used to recommend one for about a year and a half. And now um, the last six months or so, I've been uh, using a different one they recommend. And I will put the link for it down below. But with this app, you're getting the same information that as, a, as a realtor I get. And I've tested many times and updates when our system updates. It's real good information with maps and property information, everything you want to know. So I'll put a link down below um, for the app that I recommend. And you can use the website as well, too. But in the meantime, I just discourage you from using these other websites that don't have access to that MLS multiple listing service. To, to find properties for sale or values for your properties. And if you or anyone you know are in the market to buy or home, buy or sell a home, by all means, contact me, Hank at HankSellsHomes.com. Talk to you soon.